All right, first things first, you're going to download the bouncing ball PSD file from uh, the assignment. You may have to click on these three dots here to open it in a new, in a new window and then press download. You're going to open that in uh, Photoshop. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So file open, bouncing ball. Okay, you'll see there are three layers here, background, line, this is just the horizon line, and then the track, and you can delete this when you're done. We're going to keep them here for now. I'm actually going to lock these in place right now so I don't mess with them. And then I'm going to find my ellipse tool. You may have to right click. You'll find your ellipse tool here. And we're going to click and hold shift to click and drag to make a circle about that big. And I'm going to change the fill to this green color. It just has to be a different color. And then we're going to turn off the stroke. There we go. All right. So here I have my circle started. I'm also going to change my background color. I already selected a blue here. So I'm just going to use my paint bucket to fill in the background. Okay. Let's double click on the name here. We're going to call this regular ball. Or you could call it regular circle. You just want a regular circle shape. Okay, you can move that where you need to. Um, we're going to start off by going from left to right. Now, when I show you the diagram here, if I pull it up, here it is. You can see where it says spacing is slow. So we're going to space them closer together. And then spacing is going to go faster. So we're going to space them out a little further apart. The ball is going to squish and then it's going to be spaced out again, and then it'll go back together where they're spaced closer. So we're really only doing basically this part of the diagram, or you could also say this part. We're just going to have it bounce once. Okay, let's go back to Photoshop. So we're going to actually have it start off of the screen slightly. So we're going to go like right about there. We still want it to follow the track, so I'm just going to leave it right there. We're building all of our layers first, so we want to go in order. We're going to go completely in order here. We're not going to do the squished ball first and then go back to this. We need to start in order. That's going to help us out a lot. So this one first. Now I'm going to do Control J on the keyboard, and we're going to move the ball over here. Now you'll see there's the duplicate, right? We don't want it to go so far that there's this giant jump. Back to that diagram, you see how they're kind of overlapping? We want them to overlap a little bit. So I'm going to go over here. That's good. I'm going to do Control J again. Again, they're overlapping. Control J. Control J. Just keep going here. Overlapping. Pretty, try to, you know, maintain consistency. You don't want some to be spread out further than others at this point. Control J. And then once it starts to fall, you can space it out a little more here. We need to create an ellipse that's going to have, um, it's going to be stretched out a little bit. So I'm going to do Control J here on this one, and we are going to transform it. So I'm going to do Control T here, and then you're going to have to press Shift on the keyboard in order to stretch it out a little bit. So we're going to stretch it this way. You can do it either way, technically. Not a lot, but just enough to make it an oval. Now I also need to rotate this, so do Control T to rotate. And I'm going to move this one just so there's still some overlapping there on that one. We're going to have less space in between uh, or more space in between these stretched out uh, layers. So I'm actually going to call this um, stretch. There we go. So it's just stretching out. Control J again because it's going to continue to be that shape. But we're going to we're doing more space now. See how we have less overlap? Still overlapping a little bit, but it's less. And then I'll do Control J one more time for it to kind of go right about there. And now we need to make our flattened ball. We're going to make it look like it's compressing because basically when a ball falls, it actually changes shape slightly. And especially when it hits the surface, it actually will squish down a little bit. So we have the last stretched one here. We're going to do Control J. And I'm going to do Control T now to rotate that because it's going to be a little more flat. And we're going to stretch this, or sorry, not stretch it. We're going to hold down shift, and we're going to try and make this a little more squished. So it's an even more of a, an oval here. We're going to put it right there, right in the middle, where that track forms a point. Okay. Now, this is the only one, we'll just say ball hits ground here. This is the only one we need of that. 
we are not going to duplicate that one. We are going to duplicate one of these stretched out circles though. So let's do control J on that one. Now we need to rotate it so it's going to follow this track a little bit. So we're going to do control T, a lot of control T, a lot of control J. Rotate that a little bit to follow the line of that track. You're almost kind of duplicating what happened over here. Control J again. Whoops, once you do that, Control J. There we go. I'm going to Control T it a little bit just to rotate a little more. Control J. Back up at the top here. And then we need to go back to our regular ball shape. It turns back into a regular ball. So I'll find the last regular ball I did, which is this one here. And if you click on it, you can usually figure out which one you're on. So if I click on that, it'll say regular ball 7. There's copy three. So if you're not sure which one, just do a simple click with the move tool. It'll show you. Okay. Let's do control J here. Actually, before doing that, let's just do yeah, control J. And then I'm going to move this at the top. This is going to keep everything in order. All right. There we are. Now I can continue doing my control J. These ones are going to continue to overlap a little bit more because that's going to create the illusion that the speed is slowing down not as fast. And I'm going to have it go off of the screen again. Okay. Now it doesn't look like a whole lot because there's all these pieces here, but you'll see it kind of come together when we start building the animation. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn everything off. So we have regular ball at the top, ball hits ground, stretch, lots of stretch. Okay. And then regular ball. Okay. So this is going to help us Make sure that we stay somewhat in order. It's okay if it's a little off, but you want most of them to be in order so you don't get super confused. Okay, first frame, we're going to make sure that uh, this is just plain. There's nothing showing. We're going to do one frame here. Now, if you don't have your timeline showing up, you can do window and then timeline for putting it all together. Now we need regular ball. Slightly shows up there. Create a new frame. Click on the next layer. Turn off regular ball. Next frame, turn off this one, turn on that one. Turn off this one, turn on that one. It's a lot of repetition again. At this point, you should have a, a fair understanding of kind of how this works. So icons, the eye icons are a big deal for this. If you don't turn off the other one, you're going to have two. It's going to ruin the illusion. Here's my first stretch. Turn that one off. If you miss one, you can go back and add in uh, frame two. But it's a good idea to just take it nice and slow. Okay, so now this next one is not going to be going up. I need the ball hits the ground one for this one. So I'm going to turn those off. We're looking for ball hits ground right there. Okay, next frame. I believe it was stretch copy three. Yep, there it is. Okay, we'll turn off ball hits ground. Next frame, stretch copy four. So just pay attention to those numbers. That's going to really help you stay organized too. Okay. And then it becomes a regular ball again, right there, I believe. Yep. Next one, turn that one on, turn that one off. Turn that one on, turn that one off. Almost there. Keep going. And I think that's my last one. Okay, let's play it. Let's see how it looks. Not bad. Pretty good. This is essentially what I'm looking for. Now, before you turn it, turn it in, you are welcome to delete the track. You can delete the line too, if you want, just basically turning it off. Um, that may be, whoops, before I forget about that, make sure you click on the first frame and then turn off the track and it'll turn off the track for all of them. So now I can click play. It doesn't have the track anymore. It moves faster as it falls, which is what I'm looking for. And then it goes back up and slows down. So it's slower, a little faster, fast, slower. Okay, so slower, fast, slower, basically. Okay. Now, when you're ready to save, you're going to go to File, Export, and then Save for Web Legacy. We're going to click on the Save button once it pulls up here. I'm going to call it Bouncing Ball. Choose where you're going to save it. If you want it to be in your uh, downloads, just make sure you choose that. Click Save. And then it should save to your downloads as a moving animated GIF. Now, it's always a good idea to double check that. I'll go in my downloads and make sure everything saved correctly. Double click on that. Not bad. There it is.
All right, and it's bouncing along and it's just gonna keep looking like it's cycling through. So that's why we call it a cycle because it's just cycling over and over and over again. This is what you will upload to the Google Classroom assignment.